New England Conservatory is a, an unusual community of artists and just walking the halls is an inspiring experience. Every student who comes to the conservatory as a wind, brass, or percussion student is going to participate in a number of experiences that will develop them as people and musicians. I'm looking for curiosity. I'm looking for a student who wants to say, what are all the things I can do on my instrument? The student body here tends, in my opinion, tends to be very collegial. People just feel free to be supportive of each other. And it can be a very nurturing place, I think, for a place that has really such top-notch students. My name is Richard Zaboda. I'm a bassoon professor here at NEC. And uh, I've been principal bassoonist of the Boston Symphony since 1989. Many of the faculty in the wind department are players in the BSO and also other illustrious players. The wonderful principal bassoonist Richard Svoboda does an orchestral repertoire class with all the winds. He covers the repertoire that uh, we're doing that week in the symphony. So the kids can go in. The symphony has tried very hard to make it easy for students to get tickets. They have wonderful uh, student pricing. You know, a huge part of a student's education here is coming over and hearing concerts. The BSO is just a block away. And you can have your hour lesson during the week, and your teacher will tell you things about playing and try and get you to play things a certain way. You can attend also a performance at the BSO and, you know, for two hours you're going to hear examples of exactly what your teacher's telling you. Every semester that a student is in residence at the New England Conservatory, they are playing in both a wind ensemble on Tuesday and Thursday mornings and an orchestra on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. So we never have the concern that a student is not getting a broad and deep and consistent performing experience because five mornings a week they are playing with their peers, developing their skills in an ensemble. They have a marvelous orchestral program. I think that getting Hugh Wolf to come here was a great coup. For NEC. I, I've watched him working with um, these young folks and find his attitude, not only is he a fun musician, but his attitude of treating them like adult professional musicians is, is just perfect. Um, he gets wonderful results. I'm Hugh Wolf. I'm the Stanford and Norma Jean Calderwood Director of Orchestras at New England Conservatory. For young instrumentalists coming into the school, the orchestra department is a place where they're going to get a lot of great experience, they're going to get a lot of really serious work, the concerts are going to be exciting, they're going to be hopefully outside of Boston, not just local concerts, but we're thinking now about touring, and they're going to get exposure to a tremendous amount of repertoire. You know, when we choose music for the wind ensembles, there are so many things that I think about in choosing this music that extends from Gabrielli to Zanakis, from Mozart to Verez. When I'm choosing that music, of course I'm thinking about what will it do for each student, and then when I make the assignments, which student should play it. But I will also say, I want to make sure that every student, by playing all this music, will never say to a contractor when they're called, in their first year out of school. I don't know, I've never really played that. They're going to be confident. They're going to say, oh sure, I can play that. I'm Michael Wayne. I'm the second clarinetist in the Boston Symphony Orchestra and on the clarinet faculty at the New England Conservatory of Music. And then you see the orchestra and the wind ensembles are a 
very high level and there's opportunities for chamber music. What's great about NEC is that it combines so many great aspects to your education. So there's, there's some schools that have great ensembles, that have great teachers. NEC, I think, encompasses everything you need to be successful in whatever facet you want to be in. So you can still, she can still be doing that while you're doing those little accents on that grace notes. Let's hear it, let's see if you can. One of the things that's most precious to me as a teacher is the idea of bringing out what is in each artist and almost requiring them to be yeah, responsible right. for their own eventual interpretation of the pieces that they're playing. What I try to do in my own studio is to teach both art and craft, because I think both are important at a school of music. The art is the thing that enriches the lives of people who hear us, makes them happy or sad, makes them grow, makes them change. And the craft is a thing we must know to be able to make the art. Without the craft, the art never can have life. Some kids have an incredible um, gift just for the sound production, for the mechanics of it. Just notes come spilling right out of their instrument. Some people come to you, some young people, and they have something to say. They just have something to say. I would rather take a gamble on somebody's mechanical abilities and say, well, you know, if I work with them on, on breathing and reeds uh, and attach a good sound to that, but boy, listen to the statement that this young person makes. We are giving the tools and the experiences to a student today so that when they are 45, they are still very excited about their life in music. But the joy in the process of making music is so evident here in the colorful nature of, of the place, the student body, the faculty, so colorful. So I can't wait to get here every day. <laughs>